Today we will take on a task that is yet to be completed by anyone in the entire game, and we will find out if this task is truly impossible as some might say. And by conquering the impossible, a new hero will emerge. In these episodes I will attempt to push the boundaries of RuneScape by doing the lowest possible combat level achievements in the entire game. And on that note, I welcome you all to my series. Lower. Better. To start, I have began somewhat of a regular streaming schedule for once, so if you guys like spoilers, head over to my Twitch which I'll link in the description below. As well, this episode along with all the others take a lot of time to create, and if you are enjoying the series, a subscription here on my YouTube channel would help me out immensely. And of course, you know the next line, if I somehow in hell hit 1 million subscribers here on YouTube, I will change my first name to Rendy. So originally, I wanted to make this more of a relaxed questing and testing type episode, but I spent hours previously on a task I found to be impossible that was the original plan for the video. That plan was to do Slug Menace at the lowest combat possible so I could wear Proselyte at the lowest combat possible, and the largest obstacle in that quest line to get over was actually the melee room of Recruitment Drive. So back in 2014, I made some kind of side project account, and actually it was a 6 combat white armor account meaning I was able to skip the melee room because you can't actually kill the melee NPC without any items or weapons with those certain stats. So it turns out this method of getting past the room which was just dying and getting some RNG coming back was actually patched between the time of Slayer Music's video on it in October of 2016 and now, so very recently. So I spent about 12 hours theorizing and trying different methods to skip the melee room that weren't the traditional route and it seemed like none of these worked not even completing a room when you weren't inside of the area. So this rendered my original plans completely useless and I had to scrap everything and start from the beginning. And I just wanted to tell you guys this because this might happen several times within this series if I find out something is actually impossible to do. So instead of a very relaxing video that I would just quest on and test some different bugs, it turns out I'm actually going to be doing something once again with recoils, purple sweets, and in the wilderness. And guess whose wonderful idea that this was? Chesbra. Yep, yours truly, Chesbra. And he told me that this would be an extremely easy task to do to pump out a video since I only had about a week and a half after failing recruitment drive. But you never trust Chesbra because he didn't even look into the quest and realize that no one has even done it in the history of the game with 10 HP. And oh boy, was he wrong about this being an easy task. So the first thing I would have to do on the account is just go ahead and splash, um, I mean enchant bolts till I was 75 magic. This is because to be the lowest combat possible I would have to remain 10 HP as well as get 75 magic for the Mage Arena 2 requirement. But first I would have to do Mage Arena 1 and this has actually only been done by a few people in the 10 HP community to this very day. So in order to do Mage Arena 1 with these low stats, I needed to pre-brew my magic level down low in order to lower my magic defense with it, because these NPCs that are attacking me in the first part of this mini quest are actually not that powerful, and if I heal to full HP, I won't be able to tick eat their hits. So you have to fight Collodion in Mage Arena 1, and he has 5 different stages. In order to proceed through Collodion's stages, you would have to do physical damage besides the recoils, except for on the Joger NPC which would carry over from his initial phase. So I would bring my lowest hitting spell, being Airstrike, to minimize my HP XP I would be getting from this activity.
So after finally finishing all of Collodion's stages through the use of strike spells, recoils, and purple sweets, once again thanks to the idea of chess bra, I went to collect my reward from the Majorina 1 mini quest. But it turned out the god I prayed to for my newly achieved cape was none other than Chess Bra himself. Chess Bra. So besides the 75 magic and Majorina 1 requirement for Majorina 2, I would have to charge all 3 god spells inside the Majorina with 100 casts. But luckily, you can do this through splashing, so I wouldn't get any HP EXP in doing so. But I realized in order to splash, unlike the way I did with the Cursed Goblin Staff to get 75 magic, I would actually have to be wielding a god staff to cast these spells, meaning I would have to get 40 range to get enough magic negative bonus in order to splash every one of the god spells. And of course I got the 40 range at one of the most nostalgic places in the game, but now probably one of the most dead places as well. So now that I had my 40 range, I could go back to the mage arena and splash the god spells with my green dehyd vams. So many many people don't know this, but splash casting, if you are in fact splashing every time, does activate your attack on the NPC almost instantly, like melee, but you can do it from a far away range. But here it will be helpful because I will be splash casting on one NPC by going out of its aggro zone, and then instantly aggroing it back towards me, making a rotation cycle that basically never ends. So by doing this cycle of splash casting and running back out of this NPC's aggression zone, I'm able to lure him back and forth, and never get hit by the NPC. As well, I'm never going to have to use purple sweets to Tiki in order to charge these three spells. So now I had finally charged all my staffs, done Mage Arena 1, and had the 75 magic requirement so I could start Mage Arena 2. Now prior to this video, I had never even done this mini quest, so I spent a lot of my time dying within the testing. And what I quickly realized was that I actually had to run all the way back to Collodion in order to get the locating orb before I would go back to the demon every time, which on this account is a very long trek. And honestly, running back and forth after dying every time was probably where I spent most of my time researching this boss. So the three demons you have to kill in order to complete this quest spawn all around the map in certain locations. And I realized quickly as well that most of these locations I can't even do because they are positioned weirdly or there is NPCs around in the multi-combat zone that will come over and just one hit me. So for some of these bosses, especially towards the end of my goal, I would have to wait for them to spawn in a specific location which they switch every 45 minutes, not 30 minutes like the wiki says. And as I was just testing this NPC at first, my childhood idol logged in right next to me, who I didn't even think played the game in 15 years, and he used to have some amazing PK videos. Go check them out. And here's the most key component of this entire video being possible. Why many 10 HPers thought this was an impossible goal was because these NPCs despawn relatively quickly. But after a few rounds of testing, I realized that using melee or range on these NPCs, something they're not used to considering you can't do damage to them except for god spells, they wouldn't despawn as long as you were to do this once every two minutes. So in order to make this goal possible from impossible, all I would have to do is use a range weapon on these NPCs once every one to two minutes. So all of these NPCs have five total attacks. The first attack is their melee attack if you're in their melee zone. Their second attack is their special attack depending on which NPC it is. Their third attack is an ice barrage attack which you can dodge as long as you aren't standing in the spot whenever they fired it. The fourth attack is a teleblock and the fifth attack is just their standard traditional magic attack. So the main difference we're going to focus on between all three of these bosses is that special attack, the second one I listed. So for this boss, the Zami Demon, his special attack is actually a power shot, which can't hit you as long as you're outside of his total attack range, which is 13 tiles. So as you can tell, I'm going to be tick eating these bosses with recoils and purple sweets thanks to Chess Bra, but this power shot you can't actually tick eat, at least traditionally speaking. 
So instead, I'm going to go ahead and try and outrun it and go to the 14th tile every time I see it shot and get an extra hit of maybe recoil damage between that and its next attack. So originally I was going to solo these bosses which is still possible but I'm not going to be doing in this video as at first I was using recoils and spending around an hour and a half due to the bosses having a very large regen rate on their HP and them only firing every few attacks since I dodged the ice barrage spell and the special attack meaning I only get hit once every few ticks. So soloing these bosses all except for Guthix would be totally possible even on an Iron Man but you would need a lot of food and precision. And eventually I got so tired of dying and spending hours trying to solo these bosses with a tick perfect cycle and the inconsistent ping on Jagex's servers that I just said screw it, we're gonna go ahead and cheese the mini quest. So many of you know now that Chesbra got me to do this awful task in the first place and guess what? He actually refused to even help me because he said he was too busy driving his Ferrari around town. So instead, I said screw Chessbra, and we're gonna have to form a more advanced team anyways of Venge Alts in order to put me through this mini quest. So in the bottom right corner, we have BEA5, who is the highest level slayer right now on a level 3 combat. But since he's a level 3 combat, he can't actually avenge me, so I guess he's just here for moral support. <laughs> On the bottom left, we have Sam IRL, who is some Australian guy with a max cape, and guess what? He can actually avenge me. On the top left, we have Sadir, who is somehow in hell a 2007 scape Reddit moderator. Also, he can avenge me. And lastly, in the top right corner, we have Sadir who is Sadud's brother, or maybe just his alt, who can also venge me. And together with our army of one mascot and three venge alts, we form... Venge, please. And when I said cheese this mini quest earlier, I meant that I would only be having to tick eat maybe 5% of the time compared to what I would be doing if I actually soloed these bosses. Now this was a lot more effective and a lot quicker because I actually would be sitting at between 7 and 10 HP recoiling between 5 and 8 damage per tick eat and the NPC has 320 HP so I would only be stepping out around an average of maybe 80 times with off spell cast and its high regeneration rate. So for the Zami boss, even though I had Venge Alts, I took on the same strategy I did with Recoils because I had to stand far back to avoid his power shot, and I did this by stepping in and out just less frequently with the Venge and Recoil effect on the NPC. And of course, every now and then, I would use my longbow to run in and time a Tiki in order to keep him summoned and not despawn. Also, I would have to do physical damage to get these drops from these NPCs, and I could only do this through the god spells because that is the only thing that inflicts damage on them. So even though the god spells hit 20s, I would have to be careful and make sure I get the kill every time and not mess it up because I was wasting HP EXP every time I were to kill one of these NPCs. So the other sketch part about doing these tasks is I actually had to pick up the loot from the demon and run it back to Collodion, all after I spent hours killing the demon, timing everything perfectly, and basically using all these sweets on it. So I did die once, but luckily it wasn't after I got one of those drops. And the man actually left everything but my purple sweets on the ground when I came back to check. 
So with the help of my friends, once again, I took on the Cerebos next, and this was probably the easiest of the three. This is because the Cerebos' special attack will pull you into its melee zone, but only if it hits the tile you were in whenever it targeted you, meaning every time I would be behind the tree whenever I went out to attack this boss, it would target the wrong tile on the ground. So being close up makes these bosses easier, unlike the Zami one, because I can actually take melee damage, and the melee damage from these NPCs is purely tick eatable because it is delayed by one tick. So therefore, this makes it quicker to actually kill these next two bosses, because I can Vengeance and Recoil down now 2 out of 5 attacks being the mage and melee attack, versus the only sole mage attack I would tick eat earlier on the Zami demon. Now lastly, I had to deal with the Guthix boss, and this was by far the worst. This is because Guthix's special attack can actually summon pods which heals them for 5 health every few ticks, and they can also stack. And no matter what, this will out DPS your Venge and recoils because of his 5 possible attacks. So I would have to figure out some way to get rid of these pods, and it didn't help that they gave full XP drops along with HP EXP, and I definitely did not have enough HP EXP to spare to keep killing these pods. So my team and me first tried to figure out a way to get the maximum amount of spawns of these NPCs which were healing him, and then move him around the map away from these spawns, but unfortunately he could only move so far, and there wasn't even a cap on how many of these he could summon. And once again, the asshole Chesbrow shows up, starts lighting fires around our testing of this NPC, and doesn't even get on his Venge alt to help. Chesbrow. So that didn't work, and now we had to figure out a way to still to get around these healing NPCs. And the next thing I realized was that you could actually hit them with range, and it didn't need to be a magic cast spell like the boss to do damage on them. Therefore I tried using a cannon, but these were so janky it didn't even recognize they were NPCs on the ground, and the cannon couldn't fire at these spawns. So at the end of the day, how did we do it, and how did we get past these healing NPC spawns? Well, we just needed a lot of RNG. So, this boss has 5 possible attacks, and I was going to try to set high HP to get a high vengeance and recoil hit on this boss every time I were to step out, and from here I would just hope that he wouldn't use that 1 out of 5 attack that was his special attack which would summon the NPCs and heal him until he was at least 1 third HP, and I could waste a little bit of HP EXP at that point in order to kill the spawns. So after around 20 attempts of recoil and vinging this boss and trying not to get his special attack summoned, we finally got it under 1 third HP. And once again I had to waste some more HP EXP to use my Claws of Guthix spell to finish off the NPC and get the physical drop, then make it all the way back to Collodion without dying or the entire account was ruined. Go your fucking place, trash! So at this point, I was actually sweating bullets, and I did not want to die on my way back to Collodion, or the entire video was basically ruined, and I would have to make it through Hellhounds and possible PKers with 10 HP, 1 prayer, and 1 defense.
but luckily we all made it back to Collodion and I cashed in for my final prize. So now I had an imbued magic cape at 39 combat, being the lowest in the entire game, and I did this all with 10 HP, 1 prayer, 1 defense, some RNG on our side, and of course, the help of some good friends. So here on an end note, I just wanted to thank all of you for all the support I've been seeing in the comments, the feedback on Twitter, everything. It's amazing to me. And I am streaming now on Twitch. I'm trying to make this whole content creation a full-time occupation for myself. So if you want to check out the spoilers for the next video or just catch my live stream, I'll link that in the description below. And also, once again, a subscription to my YouTube channel here would be greatly appreciated. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time on Lower the Better.